We're back with Rick Blanchiardi, Senior Vice President and General Manager of KGMV Channel 9, Hawaii's Severe Weather Station. So Rick, what similarities have you found with coaching and also running the television station? Lots. Um, you know, I think I was very fortunate in that regard, especially as I evolved. Once I got beyond, you know, being a seller, if you will, and got into the management, which took me a couple of years, uh, as I said a few moments ago, a lot of who I am has been rooted in team, but clearly, you know, television is a team sport, um, albeit, you know, uh, there are probably more women in the business than, than men, and so obviously I had to learn to work with more women than obviously I was coaching as a, as a football coach, so... But that's made it even more intriguing, and, and women today are, are every bit as you know oriented towards team sports and, and co- certainly competitive. They've always been competitive and given the opportunity. So that, for me, has been a lot of fun uh, of learning how to deal with both men and women in a team sport, if you will, that you know you people drive themselves. So I, 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 there's just a lot of of things, you know. I mean, clearly we don't have you know a pregame talk per se and go out and listen to the Star Spangled Band and run out and hit people. Even though I've thought that that sometimes might work, you know, um, you know, we've come close. I would tell you, a few people would tell you, we've had some of the things close to, I guess, a pregame talk on certain occasions when the situation warranted. But it's been mostly about really uh, a helping relationship, and, and and looking at myself as somebody who was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to lead, to try to, um, you know, really be a facilitator, you know, and, and when you have the responsibility to create a work environment. Try to do that with the understanding that you're there to serve. You know, servant. I'm really a strong believer in servant leadership. Being a facilitator, I require that of my managers. We talk a lot. You know, we want excellence. That's not a bottom up kind of a deal. You know, it really, if people, if you're going to try to inspire performance. You really, you've got to have good coaches. You have to have really good men, people who inspire other people. And then, you know, the one thing about being in the medium is that for years now, and as I get older, it's even truer. You know, a lot of young people. And, you know, I like to look at that and, and think that, well, most people still have their best in front of them and that they really, you know, if you've done well in your hiring process and they're good people, that they really want to achieve that and get in touch with their own potential. So you try to create the environment that will allow that to become a reality. And you challenge them and you do things to help them with that. And that, for me, has been, you know, probably no different than going out in the corner of a field with a bunch of linebackers and, you know, going through drills, you know, for for foot and hand speed or tackling drills or the kinds of things we would do in the mechanics of playing the game or breaking down a film, you know, and, and, you know, the strategic aspects to drawing a lot of parallels to the same thing. It's just that we might deal more with writing and communication skills and presentation skills and, and, you know, and how to get appointments with people or how to close deals. I mean, you know, it's just a lot of skills. I, I tend to be, and maybe the, the best parallel is that from a coaching perspective, I really tend to be a real pragmatic kind of person, try to give people the how-to as opposed to a lot of the rah-rah, which I know some people think, you know, I, on occasion, will get a little rah-rah, but I like to do that in a way where you're acknowledging people and their success and making it fun. So what do you think is the most important in getting people to be loyal? Because it seems like a lot of the people that work with you that I've talked to are extremely loyal. Thank you for saying that. I mean, loyalty is a big issue in this world, and and, and it's not anything that I, I take as being a little bit casual about, you know, um, that when you create that kind of psychology in a work environment and people, you know, feel that, you know, as part of the glue that holds the team together, it's it's an important thing. And I think a lot of that stems from being very focused on the people. You know, we don't, you know, I've run some pretty large organizations over the years, but, you know, Television stations tend to be fairly intimate settings, especially back here in Hawaii. Even though I had the responsibility of both stations, it was only a couple hundred people all told, which is a lot. Don't get me wrong. But it's not like we're General Motors. And, you know, so you really try to understand 201, each and every one that's in your your station or on your team. And I would tell you that I think one of the real fundamental things is, you know, Warren Bennis, who you're probably familiar with, has written and been quoted a lot of times on a lot of things. But I've always loved early on, a long time ago, the distinction he made between management and leadership, you know, that managers do things right and leaders, you know, ha- do the right thing and have the courage to do the right thing. And I think it's that more than anything. I think it's always trying to understand what the right thing to do at the time and irrespective of whether it was a budget issue or maybe even a pol- whatever, do the right thing by the individual and do so consistently and people see that in you and you know that you're always going to come down. If you're on my team, I'm going to take care of you. 
and they know that, and I think that that really fosters that kind of loyalty. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.